Data structures are the core building blocks to any program that you write, whether that's on the front end, back end, mobile, game development, whatever tech stack that you use. I like to think of programs as data plus algorithms plus data structures. And data structures are a very important component with the most common ones being arrays, trees, graphs, maps, and linked lists. However, for this video, I'm gonna go over five data structures that you may have not seen before. The first data structure is a tri, which is a tree data structure where the nodes store letters inside of the alphabet. And this data structure is also known as a prefix tree. So using this data structure, you can traverse branches of the tree to search for specific words or prefixes of those words. You can also search for suffixes depending on how the data is inserted inside of your try. The interesting part about this data structure is every single node can have a character as a child. So for example, if we have 256 available characters, that means for every single node inside of our try, we could have 256 children. So for example, let's say we were to insert the words cow, cats, and cobra inside of our try. If we wanted to insert cow, we would first create the C node, since it doesn't exist yet. Then we would create O node, which is connected to C, then create a W node, which is connected to O. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the word cats. However, in this case, we already created a node for C, so we don't have to do it again. Then we move to character A, we create a node for A, connected to C, create a node for T, connected to A, and create a node for S, and connect it to T. And then finally, we go to the word cobra. Once again, we already have a node for C, we move to the letter O, we already have a node for O, so we move to B. Then we have to create a node for B, connect it to letter O, create a node for R, connect it to letter B, and then finally create a node for A and connect it to letter R. So as you can see, this data structure is efficient for storing a wide variety of words inside of it. And the real power behind it is we can search for prefixes inside of it. So for example, let's say we wanted to search for the word cat to see if it exists we would check if C is created, yes it is. Then we check if A is created, yes it is. Check if T is created, yes it is. And that means cat is inside of this try data structure and we would return true. So both inserting words and searching for words is an O of M operation where M is the length of the word. So where is this try data structure normally used? The most common case is for autocompletion. If you're typing into your phone and doing a text message, you can have different options that pop up to get as close to what you're trying to type. In parallel, another use is spell checking. If I'm typing a word and I type it incorrectly, if I store all of the words inside of my try, it can recommend the correct word for me to use. Our second data structure is what's known as a disjoint set, which is also known as union find. A disjoint set tracks a set of elements into a number of disjoint non-overlapping subsets. So I know that may sound complicated, but it's really not. All it is, is you have two key functions, which is union and find. And union will merge two subsets together into one, and then find will perform a search to determine if two objects are in the same subset. So for example, let's say I have three subsets total, each containing a group of numbers. Each subset has a parent where all the numbers inside of the subset point to that specific parent. So I can say merge subset zero and subset one, causing zero and one to just become a single subset. And this is done in an efficient manner because all we have to do to merge is change the parent of subset one to point to the parent of subset zero. And now all the numbers in subset one have been merged into subset zero. I can also say, determine if two numbers are in the same subset. This is done using the find operation. If I want to check if two numbers are in the same subset, all I have to do is check if their parents are the same. If their parents end up being the same, that means they are in the same subset. So where is this data structure typically used? The first place is in Kruskal's minimal spanning tree, and the second is to compute least common ancestors. On your day-to-day, -day, you're probably not gonna have to know Kruskal's minimal spanning tree or computing least common ancestors. So what is the best use of this data structure? Well, this data structure can be used to solve a bunch of different interview problems. Some of the most common interview problems that you've seen, like number of islands, 
friends circles, number of connected components in an undirected graph, accounts merge, and a bunch of other ones, all of these can be solved with the disjoint set data structure. Data structure number three is a tree map. So a tree map inherits from a hash map, but the difference is that the entries are sorted by the ordering of the keys or by a custom comparator class that you provide to the constructor. So for example, if we were trying to store the entry of an integer mapping to a string, all of the entries inside of your tree map would be sorted in ascending order based on that integer value. Under the hood, this data structure is using a red-black tree to maintain order in an efficient manner. So the performance for insertions and lookup are actually log of n. For example, let's say I added the following entries inside of my tree map. If I were to say, find me the first key, which is the lowest, that would return one. I could also say, find me all keys that are less than a number. So I could say, find me all numbers less than two, that would just return entry one. I could also say, find me all keys greater than or equal to one. So that would return all of our entries in our tree map. So when should you use this data structure? If you ever have to perform queries such as finding the largest number, finding the smallest number, finding keys that are less than or greater than, this is the perfect data structure for doing that. The fourth data structure is what's known as a skip list, and this is a faster way to search for nodes inside of linked lists. In a normal linked list, if you wanted to search for a specific node, that would take O of n time where n is the number of nodes, because in the worst case, you would have to search through every single node. However, in a skip list, you have what's known as an express lane on top of your normal link list. So you have your normal lane, which has all of the connections to every single node inside of your link list. And then your express lane is skipping over a bunch of different nodes. So for example, let's say I wanted to search for the node 45. I would first go to my express lane, which starts at node 10. That is less than node 45. So I need to move forward to node 30. As a result of doing that, I got to skip a bunch of nodes in my normal lane. 30 is also less than 45, so I moved to node 57. However, node 57 is greater than 45, so now I know where I need to start my search in my normal lane. So from node 30, we move to 43 and then 45 and then we found our node. For a skip list, our search, insert, and delete will all be log of n. So I'm sure you might be wondering, well, when will we use this? This is actually very similar to how balanced trees work. The answer to that question is if we need an ordered, thread-safe data structure in a distributed environment. If we have a balanced tree, and we need to rebalance it in a distributed environment where we have many different threads trying to access pieces of memory inside of this tree, that requires us to have a mutex lock on a huge portion of the tree potentially. And that is very inefficient because while this tree is being rebalanced, there may be large portions of the tree that aren't even being modified. However, for a skip list, we can have the same functionality as the balanced trees, and we can put a mutex on every single node. Thus, we only need to lock nodes that are directly affected. The fifth and final data structure is what's known as a B tree, and these are self-balancing binary trees. So in normal binary trees, we have the potential to have a degraded tree if the tree is not balanced well. We could have a bunch of nodes inside of this tree that are essentially just a link list. If our tree degrades to this, that means our search, insert, and delete become O of N. However, when a tree is balanced, it is log of N, so it has a very big difference. A B tree will ensure that our tree is always balanced each time an insertion or deletion happens. Each node inside of a B tree contains keys, and keys are just the data that's represented inside of the nodes. The order of a B tree is the number of children that each node can have at maximum. So for every key inside of a node, we can have further nodes as our children, and that is if they are greater than the key on the left 
and less than the key on the right. So where is this data structure used? You will probably never have to implement one of these from scratch. However, a B tree is the default index for most storage engines, specifically MySQL. The power behind a B tree in terms of storage engines is now you don't have to scan all of the data to find the desired rows. So those were the five data structures that you may have not heard about. Some of them are easier to understand than others, of course. If you guys want me to go in further detail in any one of these data structures, I can make a full length video on any of them. Just let me know in the comments. So that is all I have for you guys in this video. Don't forget to go check out my Patreon if you want access to our private Discord. We have a small community that's growing. So yeah, peace out.